climate. Climate, we say, is what you expect, whereas weather is what you get. Climate is, the, is a region's long-term temperature and moisture. Now, in terms of temperature, the source of all heat and weather on Earth is the sun. And heat travels in three different ways. Energy from the sun radiates through space, through waves. And that's radiation. Heats the Earth's surface primarily by conduction. And then we have convection within the atmosphere. The heated material, for instance, at the bottom of the stove, becomes less dense, rises towards the surface. Cooler water sinks to replace it, producing motion. So heat is then transferred from the bottom of the pot to the top. This is how heat moves within our atmosphere. Heat transfers through space, through, through waves. The Earth's surface is heated, not the atmosphere. The surface is heated by the, the sun. The surface then heats the air above it, causes the heat to rise, the heated air to rise, cooler air to sink. And this is how heat is moved throughout our atmosphere, producing weather. The biggest impact on temperature is latitude, because the Earth's surface is curved. Here, at the equator, the Earth's surface is being hit directly by the sun's rays, meaning the sun's rays come in at a 90 degree angle from the surface of the Earth. It's focused on the equator, and thus is more concentrated. At the mid-latitudes, if you look, because of Earth's surface being curved, the sun's rays are hitting at a less of an angle. Instead of the 90 degree angle here, it might be a 60 degree angle here. Since it's a less angle, the air, the, the heat, sorry, is spread out over a larger area. Since it's the same amount of heat, but it's spread out more, it, produ it produces less heat in the area. And the effect is even greater at the poles. Notice much sharper angle. So the light is spread out over a larger area, producing weaker rays. So this gives us much hotter temperatures at the equator and cooler temperatures at the poles. The equator we call tropical it has no winter. In the mid-latitudes, we call it a temperate climate. They have all four seasons. And the polar climates have no summer. Moisture is next. If you look at the atmosphere, lower in the atmosphere tends to be warmer. And as you rise, the temperature decreases. This is why uh, tops of mountains often have snow on them, even if the bottom does not because as you go up higher in the atmosphere, the temperature decreases. So imagine air. If the Earth's surface is hotter, and it causes the air above it to rise, that air, as it rises, it cools off. Any moisture in it is condensed into liquid and produces clouds. The clouds then produce rain. So whenever you have rising air, you are likely to produce clouds and rain. There are some latitudes where the air rises, and thus they become very humid or wet. Other latitudes, the air sinks, producing deserts. So the sun rays hit the equator more directly, heating the air up more, which causes the air above them to rise, to condense, and produce precipitation. This doesn't leave an area with no air, so it draws in more air from the north and south to replace it. The air then sinks at 30 degrees north and south. You get this convection current. that actually is drawing air, wind, towards the equator, which is then twisted by the Earth's rotation. And this pattern continues to cover the whole globe. And we're left with very humid areas along the equator because you have rising low pressure air producing clouds and precipitation. You get the same 
at 60 degrees north and south. And then you have very arid areas. Most of our deserts are centered around 30 degrees north and south because the air is sinking. And the Earth's poles are also very arid, dry, because the air sinks there again. This is why Antarctica actually ha is a considered a desert, because the air is sinking, produces very little precipitation. So this is what you end up with latitudinally. Warm to cool, but also wet, dry, wet. Large bodies of water also have an impact, such as oceans. Marine climate have cooler summers and warmer winters, a small temperature range. Continental climates have hotter summers and colder winters, a large temperature range. If you look at it, here we have temperature and the months of the year. The dashed lines are marine climates, so near the ocean. The solid lines are continental climates, so they're near the center of the continent. Notice in all of them, the dotted line doesn't go as far, doesn't get as cold in the winter, and doesn't get as hot in the summer. This is why we go to the beach in the summertime, because it'll be nice and cool there in comparison to further inland where it's hot. And the opposite happens in the wintertime slightly warmer at the beach and cooler further inland. This is part of why you don't get so much snow in the beach as you do further inland. We don't get as cold. Okay. Basically the water absorbs a lot of the heat and keeps you from, it acts sort of like an insulator, keeps you from getting too hot or too cold. And this happens year round. Notice in the south, the southern latitudes, you go from the equator to the South Pole, that the uh, temperature curves are opposite. This is because the North, when the North has summertime, the South has wintertime. Remember that. We also have lake effect snow. You may have heard of this. If you've ever lived in New York, you definitely know this. When water, when wind flows over a large body of water, it gathers more moisture. And when it reaches land, it dumps the moisture. So wind flows mainly west to east across the United States. So as when wind travels over the Great Lakes, it tends to produce snow on the far side of the lakes. Ocean currents make a difference as well. Warm currents, logically enough, make you a little warmer, but also they make you moister. Cool currents, logically enough, make you cooler, but they also dry you out. So these are Earth's global currents. Here's the United States, North America. Notice on the southeast, we've got the Gulf Stream, a warm ocean current. This keeps us slightly warmer, but also a lot more moist than we would normally, whereas California has a cold current that dries it out. Up in Seattle, you always hear about it gets so much rain because it's got a warm current right offshore. And we've been looking at London lately for the Olympics. Notice its latitude. Virginia's latitude is down here. Look at London. It's far more far, further north. It's further north than Maine. It's way up Canada. But the temperatures there, they don't look like they're covered in snow all the time because they aren't. They've got this Gulf Stream keeps it much wetter, that's why it rains all the time, and much warmer than it would be normally. Mountains affect climate as well. There are two sides to a mountain, the windward, the side facing the wind, and the leeward, the side away from the wind. Think of it, the wind is leaving. The windward side is wet, the leeward side is dry. Why? Well, if you look, Wind comes towards a mountain. It can't go through it, so it's forced to go over it. And you've got the rising air. Rising air, remember, the air cools, the water condenses, produces clouds and precipitation. So you get rain. So you get very wet and, and uh, cooler, relatively, on that side of the mountain. 
on the other side, the air is sinking. As it sinks, it warms up, dries out, and you get a desert, as you can see in this little animation. So the windward side is wet and cool, and the leeward side, we call it a rain shadow, because uh, like a normal shadow has no light, a rain shadow has no rain. It's a desert. Like California, wind comes off the Pacific Ocean, you've got lots of moisture. This is where you get all of the mudslides that you hear about on TV. And on the other side of the Sierra Nevadas, we get the Great Basin, Death Valley. It's very, very dry. It's a desert. This was kind of a neat picture of this happening um, in Florida recently. The wind blew off of the ocean, and as it's forced to go up over these skyscrapers, clouds form from the condensation. And then, as they sink, it dries out. Kind of pretty. Kind of neat. Right. Earth's climate is not constant. It changes. We've had several ice ages. Very recently, we've had many ice ages. This is, at the top, we have the present. And as you go down, it's time of millions of years ago. This is 1.6 million years ago. This vertical line is current average global temperature. Notice much of the time, it's been a lot colder. We've had a lot of glacier periods lately, a lot of uh, ice ages. And a few times, it's been a lot warmer. This solid dashed line is how far the ice extended 20,000 years ago. All this area was coated in ice, miles of ice, deep. When so much of the Earth's water was in that ice, the sea level was a lot lower. So this solid line down here is where our old coastline used to be, because the sea level was 100 meters lower, because there was so much more ice. Times when it was warmer, when the ice melted, sea level rose to where this dotted line is. You can see most of Florida is gone, as well as eastern shore of uh, the United States. You may have also heard of El Nino. Now, El Nino means the boy. And uh, it's how hard the wind blows off the shore of Peru. Normally, off the shore of Peru, the wind blows very strongly out to sea. And this blows the surface water out of the way, drawing in nutrient-rich cold water from underneath, upwelling current. It's got so much nutrients from all the dead stuff laying at the bottom of the ocean. And this feeds the local fisheries, and we have some great harvesting areas here. During El Nino, this wind gets very weak, and so the cold water can't come up, and so the fish die. Well, why do we care? Well, here's where El Nino happens, and all these shaded areas are all of the changes we get globally based on how hard the wind blows here in Peru. Huge differences. La Nina is the opposite. It's when the wind blows even harder than normal, making it unusually cold, and we get the opposite effect. Solar energy can change our climate. Here we have sunspots. They're on an 11-year cycle. When you have more sunspots, more energy is being emitted from the sun, and so we get hotter. When there's less sunspots, they get a little colder. The Earth's orbit actually wobbles a bit, so that affects our climate. And volcanic eruptions affect our climate. Ironically enough, volcanoes make us colder because all of the ash they put up into the atmosphere, if it's powerful enough, if it gets high enough, can block out the sun, making us colder. Mount Tambora in 1850 erupted 19 cubic miles of ejecta. Meaning that's how much material was erupted into the air, like you see in this image of Mount St. Helens. It produced so much that the year after is what we call the year without a summer. That summer, across Europe and the United States, the temperature dropped low enough that it was actually snowing in July. Humans are the final impact on climate. 
desertification, causing deserts to increase in size, deforestation, where we cut down trees, since trees absorb heat, cooling us off, and produce moisture, if there are less trees, we get hotter and drier, particularly at the equator. And urbanization. If you look here, anybody who's ever walked barefoot knows that asphalt and concrete are much hotter on your feet than grass are. The same sunlight is hitting both areas, but the concrete and asphalt hold the heat and radiate it, thus increasing local temperatures. If you ever look at a major city, like New York City, for instance, in the wintertime, I used to live outside there, the suburbs would get snow. We'd have a snow day and we'd all be excited. When it hit the city, though, because it was so much hotter in the city, just a degree or two, the snow would melt, or it wouldn't snow at all. There'd be no precipitation whatsoever. So you get far more snow days outside of the city than you do in the city. Same happens here in D.C. Finally, we have climate change. Due to something we call the greenhouse effect. Here we have a greenhouse. The way it works is the sun's energy can pass through glass. It's powerful. And it comes in and it heats the interior. But when it bounces off the interior and would bounce out back out into space, the, it actually has lost a great deal of energy. It has less energy, so it cannot escape the glass. So the energy can come in, but it can't get out. This is why a greenhouse is warm year-round. This is also why our car gets hot when it sits in the sun. Certain gases, called greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor are the biggest ones, act in this same fashion. These three gases are produced whenever you burn something. You could be burning trees, burning trash, or burning fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are the, what we burn the most of. So when we burn these fossil fuels, it produces more greenhouse gases that trap the heat, increasing global temperatures, which melts ice caps and sea level, and causes more storms.